All right, hey everyone. So another JG Extra. I know it's been a little while, but in service studying kind of got me, and then I started focusing on some other stuff. So, anyways, um, a quick one today. This one is a pretty interesting one. Something that I had never heard about before until I saw this patient. Um, and basically, it's the Omaya catheter and how to get the easiest LP of your life. So, um, the patient that inspired this was a 31-year-old male with a history of CML, and he came in with a headache on the left side of his head. And when I asked him to describe what the headache felt like, he literally said it felt like explosions. And the concerning thing to him <clears throat> was that it was very similar to the last time he had a blast crisis, which was one year ago. So on his labs, he had uh, a normal white count at the time one year ago, but his LP showed that he had a white count of 1,100. And the other concerning thing to him today was that in addition to the headache, he had a uh, bout of transient left lower extremity paralysis for about 20 minutes. He says that he couldn't move anything in his left leg. Uh, and then it just kind of spontaneously improved. So uh, when I asked him about surgeries uh, further down in the HPI, he said, yeah, they put in an Omaya catheter. And I thought to myself, okay, the Omaya catheter. I had no idea what he was talking about. Um, so... As far as his neuro exam, one thing to note that we'll talk about, we'll bring up later, uh, he did have uh, bidirectional nystagmus and a normal gait, but ataxia on tandem gait. So uh, that's one thing to, to that one thing to bring up is just always remember to test tandem gait in addition to a regular gait. So, anyways, uh, I spoke with the attending, and our plan was to get an MRI and also an MRV to see if he had some kind of subtle uh, dural venous uh, thrombus or something. Uh, sinus thrombus that could have been causing the paralysis and the other changes that he was having, especially him being prone to uh, uh, clots. So I uh, spoke with Dr. Corral, as this was a patient of Dr. Gower. Dr. Corral was on call for him. And he said that the plan of the MRI and MRV was good, but that we should also do an LP. And then he says, actually, he has a Omaya catheter. Just go ahead and tap that. So I said, okay. And I hung up the phone and I said, now I really need to figure out what the heck is this Omaha catheter. So, um, really quick point. Uh, it's always good to remember to speak with your consultants, especially in this case, in a hemonc patient, since they can give you the okay, that it's okay for you to do the, the tap of the, ca uh, the Omaha catheter if you're comfortable with that. And uh, to let you know if they would like any specific testing done, such as in this case, he wanted me to add a flow cytometry to the uh, CSF that we would collect. And if I hadn't spoken with him, he wouldn't. I wouldn't have known to do this. So another good um, person to call, especially in this instance, is your pathologist. Not something I do too often, but I did call our pathologist here. You can just call the main lab number and they can tell you how to get in touch with them. It was a really cool guy and uh, he told me how to order the flow cytometry. And then you'll see why also it's, uh, it was really useful to get in touch with him. So what is the Omaya catheter? Um, basically, it's this little device right here. And it is essentially just a little reservoir uh, with a catheter on the end that sits just under the skin uh, and on the head. And it goes into a portion of the brain, most commonly in one of the ventricles. You can see a little close up here. Uh, this is the reservoir portion. It's basically in the shape of a, a dome and then extending down from that you have your catheter where you can pour, put out your uh, chemotherapeutic agents if that's what you want to do or you can suck up your CSF from there okay so um, a little bit more about it as I said there's two parts the reservoir and the catheter the nice thing about it is it gets you an easy access to collect CSF um, from the patient or if they're getting um, chemotherapy, they can get intrathecal chemotherapy. And for the patient, this allows uh, them to pass the blood-brain barrier easily. So, how do you tap in my catheter? First step is to shave the head um, so that you can actually get to the skin. What we basically did was give the patient the same essential haircut that we, you see here. Um, and then you want to clean everything very well, uh, betadine, chlorhexidine, whichever one you prefer to use. Of course, everything needs to be sterile. Um, and what I did was I used the LP kit. It seemed the easiest thing to use. Um, got the needle from the kit, uh, about a 22 gauge, and used the syringe 
that normally you would use to anesthetize a patient. I just grabbed that syringe, hooked up the needle. Uh, once everything was clean, essentially just went into the skin, felt a little pop, and then clear CSF started flowing into the syringe. So it was easy as that, withdrew the needle, um, hold a little pressure for a minute with the sterile gauze after, and then put a band-aid on and that's it. So here's just essentially a little um, picture showing the Amaya catheter and uh, your needle that you could use attached to the syringe right there from your LP kit. Uh, and it's really, as I said, it's super easy. You barely get under the skin, feel a little pop and start as as I mean aspirate as you go in of course. But as soon as you feel that pop, then you start to collect your CSF. So, uh, I split the CSF as usual into the, the four tubes. Not that that was going to make a difference in, if you know if you wanted to compare tubes one to four, but just so that the labs had four tubes of fluid. Uh, sent that off, and then uh, this brings up the point of how it is possible uh, to have a CNS or CSF blast crisis. Okay. Um, one rationale of how this happens is uh, one case report said that there was, there is poor penetration of the CNS by chemo drugs such as imatinib in that case. And so the CNS thus acts as a sanctuary site for malignant cells uh, for patients with CML who are treated by imatinib in that case. Uh, so in this case today, my 31 year old guy, he had a normal white count or slightly low, I guess, of 3.97 but his Omaya fluid, or the CSF from the Omaya catheter, had a white count of 40. The other nice thing about getting in touch with the pathologist, he called me in about 25 minutes after we had sent the fluid, and he said that there's blast cells all over the place. This guy has a CSF blast crisis, so diagnosis confirmed. Uh, again, this is a rare occurrence to have a CNS blast crisis, but it is something that you want to add to your differential in a patient who has CML and they have some kind of concerning neurologic symptoms. Uh, my patient was just as simple as headache and blurred vision, but also with the concerning paralysis. But it can also be very subtle. There was one case report of a 64-year-old female who just had a slow, progressive cognitive decline over six months, and they weren't sure was it old age or what, but finally someone collected CSF, and they saw blast cells all over the place. So that's what they attributed to. They treated her, and she improved. Another important point um, from the physical exam, as some of the hospitalists have told me, it's just bilateral nystagmus. It's no big deal. Actually, it can be a pretty big deal. This guy, unfortunately, had an MRI done during his stay uh, once I admitted him, and he um, and it showed that he had uh, interval development of a mass in mass like enhancement in his left superior cerebellar lobe, most likely from uh, leukemic mass. And uh, so, sorry, just gonna get that out of the way. Um, just remember, so these subtle signs on your neuro exam can be concerning for some bigger pathologic process, okay? especially in the cerebellar or brainstem. Um, remember your HINTS exam, uh, HI standing for head impulse, N for nystagmus, TS for test of skew. Um, and kind of brings up this one 2011 article about uh, does my pa dizzy patient have a stroke? And it's just kind of pointing you towards the, the cerebellar and brainstem signs of, of uh what I just mentioned. So that's basically it for this JG Extra. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and thank you for listening.